In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today we continue to hear of the revelation of the glory and the majesty of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The miracle at Cana in Galilee underlines the work that Christ has come to do to restore creation, to heal it, and to give us a cause for joy. He would have been instructed in the rabbi's instructions that a Jew's duty was to repair creation, tikam olam, and so he too comes above all to restore creation. And we have that good hope because, as Paul reminds us, in him everything holds together. In Christ all things are made one. In the presence of the God and Father of us all, we meet together to give thanks for the spiritual unity which is already ours as members of the body of Christ. Let us acknowledge our sin, that this unity may, by God's grace, become a visible unity, so that his church in every place may demonstrate the healing power of the gospel and be an instrument of his peace in the life of the world. Lord Jesus, you come to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much, that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins, and make you holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. As Christian Unity Week draws to its climax, we pray for our sisters and brothers throughout the world that we may be one in faith but also in action. Heavenly Father, you have called us in the body of your Son Jesus Christ to continue his work of reconciliation and reveal you in the world. Forgive us the sins which tear us apart. Give us the courage to overcome our fears and to seek that unity which is your gift and your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After his return from the defeat of Chedorlaomer and the king who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shave, that is the king valley. And the king Melchizedek of Salem 
brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And Abraham gave him one-tenth of everything. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Blessed are all those who fear the Lord and walk in his way. Blessed, Blessed are, are the, those, those who, fear, who the fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed are all those who fear the Lord and walk in his way. You shall eat the fruit of the toil of your hand. It shall go well with you, and happy shall you be. Blessed, Blessed are, are those, those who fear the Lord and walk, and walk in, in his, his way. way. Your wife within your house shall be like a fruitful wine, your children round your table like fresh olive branches. Thus shall be the one be blessed who fear the Lord. Blessed are all those who fear the, fear Lord. the Lord. Walk in his ways. The Lord from, the Lord from out of Zion bless you that you may see Jerusalem in prosperity all the day of your life. May you see your children's children, and may there be peace upon Israel. Bless are all those who fear the Lord and walk in his way. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying out, Alleluia, for the Lord our God the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult, and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are true words of God, then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John.
On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It feels like a very long time ago that we were allowed to go to wedding receptions. I know people who, due to the current situation, have postponed their weddings, and some who've decided to go ahead anyway, but with a minimal number of guests. I'm sure all of us have attended at least one wedding at some point. Many of us have attended plenty. We all know how much fun they can be. They're happy occasions and everyone's in a good mood. I was once best man to a friend of mine and I was concerned that people might not laugh at my jokes during my speech. But I needn't have worried. I opened with what I thought was a fairly feeble joke and everybody laughed very heartily. I realised then that due to everyone already being in a happy mood and probably fuelled by the wine during the meal, they'd laugh at pretty much anything. All through history, weddings have been joyous and important occasions. And all through scripture, from the Old Testament prophets, through the parables of Jesus, to the closing chapters of Revelation, as we heard earlier, we see many references to the coming of God's kingdom being likened to a marriage. A few moments ago, we heard that familiar story of Jesus and his mother attending a wedding at Cana. Weddings were big events back then. Everyone in the village would probably have been invited, along with quite a few people from surrounding towns and villages, and the party would probably have lasted several days. At such a massive event, to run out of wine wouldn't have just been inconvenient, but it would be a social disaster and a disgrace on the newly married couple as they started their new lives together. So when the unthinkable happened, there was quite likely a lot of panic behind the scenes. When Mary discreetly said to Jesus, they have no wine, she was quite clearly implying, do something about it. Jesus' response is interesting, pretty much shrugging his shoulders and saying, not my problem. But Mary persisted. So Jesus called the servant to bring six stone jars, not just any old jars. For a start, we know they were huge, about 20 to 30 gallons. I'm not sure how big that would be, but I'm guessing probably about the capacity of this pulpit. They had a very special use, and that was for ritual purification, 
which was very important to the Jews. There's a long list of times and reasons when ritual purification was deemed necessary, which I'm not going into now, but it was seen as being vital to be clean in the sight of God. And we all know what happened next. Everyone there thinks the event has gone without a hitch. The groom is probably a bit bemused to be thanked for saving the best wine until last. But everyone is happy and oblivious to the remarkable event that had just taken place. Without realising it, they had just witnessed the first miracle that Jesus performed, albeit somewhat reluctantly. In this gospel passage, we see the full picture of Jesus and his mother. At this point, Mary was the only person who knew who Jesus truly was and was longing for him to be the Messiah she had imagined. In a way, she had both understood and misunderstood. This is one of only two occasions we meet Our Lady in John's Gospel, the other being when she stood at the foot of the cross. So she was to travel a long road and to wait in darkness for the hour to strike. Rather like the wedding itself, Mary has become almost like a symbol, rushing to Jesus, wanting instant solutions. Yes, the answer was given and pointed to much more that was still to come. But we must remember that Jesus is, is not there at our beck and call to smooth over our social embarrassments, like at the wedding. Rather, he's there to reveal God's glory. And like Mary, we must be patient and learn when and how this will take place. But we must also remain obedient to God, however difficult that may be. Even when the request may seem bizarre or even plain daft, rather like the servant who put his job on the line and risked being on the receiving end of the head steward's anger by serving purification water on the say-so of a stranger. But to disobey, to disobey would be to miss out on the glory. So as we remember how Jesus can transform us in much the same way that he transformed water into wine, we also listen, we obey, and we take heed of the word of his blessed mother. Do whatever he tells you. Amen.
Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In faith, let us pray to God our Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. In faith, let us pray to God our Father, his Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. For the Church of God throughout the world, let us invoke the Spirit. Kyrie eleison. For the leaders of the nation, that they may establish and defend justice and peace, let us pray for the wisdom of God. Kyrie eleison. For those who suffer oppression or violence, let us invoke the power of the Deliverer. Kyrie eleison. That the churches may discover again their visible unity in the one baptism, which, may in, which incorporates them in Christ. Let us pray for the love of Christ. Kyrie eleison that the churches may attend communion in the Eucharist around one table. Let us pray for the strength of Christ. Kyrie eleison. That the churches may recognize each other's ministry in the service of their one Lord. Let us pray for the peace of Christ. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray for all those who ask for prayers. Helen Nutting, Dave Hines, Finton Crotty, Graham Spalding, Sabir, Donovan Dollison, Liz Woodhouse, Pat Parker, James Delaney, Nathan Tulip, Christopher Love, Lorna Gautier, David Maitland, Simon Gabe, Michael Hale, Vinette and Mike Melbourne, Michael Cooper, Adam Phillips, Peter Bibby, Philippa Pierce, Julie Lowe, Anne Newman, Naomi Ioannou, Alan Dreja, June McCallum, Carmen Alvarez, Paul Allen, and Paul Wong. Let us also pray for those we know that's recently departed, past priests and benefactors and friends, and all whose years mine occurs this week. 
those recently departed, Jacqueline Harris, Ivy Sheen, Manuel Noel, Tyrell Shai. For all those whose ears' minds are closed this week, Sarah Hill, Francis Martin, Walter Martin, Mary Rose, Reginald Fisher, Tom Stevens, priest and former honorary assistant curate at St. John's, Rosalie Hume Nicholl, Bernard Wilson, priest, William Stone, Doris Steele, Pauline Martin, choir and flowers, Henry Dresser, Florence House, Mary Stacy, Richard Zaff, Mabel Ashton, Terry McGuinney, Edith Crane, Percy Fisher, and Eleanor Mildage. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. If our life in Christ means anything, if love can persuade at all, or the spirit that we have in common, or any tenderness and sympathy, then be united in your conviction and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Awesome. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you all online and here. During the offertory, um, the hymn that's in the text is after communion. Uh, Jay is going to play now, so that will give you some time to just reflect. And of course, if you're at home, you're allowed to sing. So we hope you will surprise your neighbours by singing lustily.
my sisters and brothers that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. As the grain once scattered in the fields, and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside, are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. By him, your only Son, who restored to us peace through the blood of his cross, you will to reconcile all creatures. In him you have led us to the knowledge of your truth, that bound together by one faith and one baptism, we might become his body. Through him you have given us your Holy Spirit to all peoples, to work marvels by innumerable gifts and an abundant variety of graces. Gathering us together in unity, your Spirit dwells in the hearts of all your children, filling the whole church with his presence and guiding it with wisdom from above. And so, with steadfast love, we proclaim your glory and join with hosts of angels in their triumphant hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God our power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Mother of God, John the Evangelist, Auburn the Martyr, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen.
believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, whose Son at supper prayed that his disciples might be one, as he is one with you, draw us closer to him, that in common love and obedience to you, we may be united to one another in the fellowship of the one Spirit, that the world may believe that he is the Lord, to your eternal glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Keep yourself safe and well during this coming week. Our thoughts and prayers are with you all. The Lord be with you. Also with you. The Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, teach you to walk in his way more truthfully, to accept his truth more faithfully, and to share his life more lovingly, that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may come as one family to the kingdom of the Father. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We have seen his glory, the glory revealed to all the nations. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.